This is a story about change. In the land from which humans first came, Kenya is embracing its largest ever infrastructure project. A 480 kilometer long rail line connecting the capital, Nairobi, with Mombasa, the largest port in East Africa. This dream has been alive for over a hundred years. The challenge of traversing mountain ranges and crossing rivers is above all a dialogue and communion between man and nature. <laughs> Kenyan and Chinese railway workers tell the story of the Mombasa-Nairobi railway line together in their own words. I'm 27 years. I'm a student at the Technical University of Kenya. I'm studying civil engineering. Esther Wanjiku grew up in Nairobi, and her love for architecture and engineering began in her childhood. She chose engineering as her university major and did quite well. As graduation draws near, Esther hopes to find a good job. It's very hard to find a job. And I think in our country, we have so many graduates. And especially now being a lady, uh, in an industry that is um, known to be male-dominated, it's not easy. Esther finds it hard to secure an engineering job since such positions are few and far between in Kenya. The only railway currently in existence was built a hundred years ago. Uh, the first railway in Kenya was built by the Indians uh, together with the British. Uh, that's a hundred years ago, and by then Nairobi was just a, a wetland, not so many people used to reside here. Nairobi was once a small town whose main industry was the supply of railway labor. Today, it's blossomed into a city of over four million people. Rapid population growth has put a massive strain on the transportation infrastructure of East Africa. The old railway system can only carry about a million tons of freight each year. As a result, most cargo in Kenya must be transported by road. The Kenya A1009 highway is in poor condition. As a freight hub of paramount importance, Kenya is in urgent need of a new railway line connecting its coastal regions with the interior. In August 2009, Kenya Railways agreed to cooperate with the China Road and Bridge Corporation to construct the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway. This new line will effectively reduce the travel time between Mombasa and Nairobi from 10 hours to about four. Moreover, the railway serves as the first section of the Northern Corridor Railway, upon which the imports and exports from countries like Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, DR Congo and South Sudan will be transported. In December 2014, the Mombasa Nairobi Railway project officially broke ground. Everyone was talking about how the government is going to build a new railway that is going to be better and faster than the, than the old railway. That is going to bring a lot of change and a lot of development to our country and the neighboring countries. I got a job in the Standard Gauge Railway um, at the Section 1 in Mombasa. I will miss you, but I know you're going to work. All I want is that you keep God first. Take care. Be a good girl. I miss you. Bye. See you. 
I know I'm going to miss my family, but I also know that I'm going to make new friends. I am very excited to be part of this great project. This is Mombasa, the starting point of the railway, and where Esther is going to work. The company has assigned a supervisor for each new site engineer. 31-year-old Yechun Gui comes from Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region in southwest China. He's the engineering manager for the number two division, section one project site office of the Mombasa Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway. Yetuan Gui's team specializes in grading, leveling the ground, and within the coming three months, must unearth and excavate nearly 1.4 million cubic meters of dirt. Yetuan Gui wants to train Esther as a site engineer, in charge of site equipment management, personnel deployment, and construction organization. What he go out if he know quick here? He will block the slope. But this one is no problem. This one is really small. Yeah, he can go out. I think in the beginning there was a lot of work. First of all, when you get here in the morning, you have to uh, organize the workers. That is the drivers, the labor. You have to organize the, mach the machinery, the kind of work they have to do. Because Though confronted with many challenges, Esther knows that she's not alone. The Mombasa Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway has created an average of about 60 jobs per kilometer of line. More than 30,000 Kenyans now work side by side with their Chinese counterparts, accounting for 90% of the total railway workforce. Esther believes that if others can do a good job, then so can she. I think for me, is uh, I've been able to discover a lot about myself. Uh, I've discovered some ability that I, before I didn't know I had. The Mombasa Nairobi Railway Project is divided into 11 sections. Each has its own regional project site office, responsible for construction in that specific sector. While Esther and Yatrin Gui's team are busy with ground leveling, factories located along the route of the railway begin making the parts required to build the line. Rail ties are used for support and load transmission. Manufacturing ties is a complicated task, involving 18 steps which include steel reinforcement, concrete pouring and curing. As many as 1,400 tyres can be manufactured each day. While only two T-beams, weighing 143 tonnes each, can be fabricated. My name is Nicholas. I'm 28 years old, coming from Nairobi. But now I'm working with the SGR as an interpreter. Nicholas helps Chinese engineers translate technical terms and explains to the Kenyan workers in detail each process. I should have to understand misunderstanding between the Chinese people and the local people, where we can have when translating, that is the biggest challenge. In October of 2015, the track laying and beam erection work of the Mombasa Nairobi Railway project commenced. The T-beams and rail ties are delivered to where they're needed. To speed things up, Chinese workers built a 10-kilometer supply line. Wang 
Yuan Hang from Shandong Province in East China has been laying railway lines for 15 years. He's now the deputy director of the seventh project management team and is responsible for track laying and erecting beams. One section of track is composed of 44 rail ties, spanning 25 meters and weighing 15 tons. It takes only four minutes to lay a track panel, with a margin of error less than two centimeters. Erecting load-bearing beams, also known as T-beams, is far more demanding than laying sections of track, since the workspace is restricted and the weight in lifting is uneven. Wan Yuan Hung's team is erecting beams for the 807.46 meter long Orma Gedigara Bridge. There are 79 bridges of varying lengths along the Mombasa Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway, and Wang Yuan Hung's office will work on half of them. My name is Miriam Cherono Rono. I'm 23 years old. I work as a plant operator at Q Section 5. Relax. Let me take it over from there. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah, this work is meant for men. As always, a lady should be smart. I'm going to work. Always look nice. He excavates natural volcanic ash to replace the coal ash used in the mix of high performance concrete. Shortly after construction began, demand for concrete rapidly began to outstrip supply. The situation was exacerbated further still by Kenya's dependence on the import of fly ash, a critical ingredient in the manufacture of concrete. In response, specialists from the China Academy of Construction Research proposed a bold countermeasure, the replacement of fly ash with volcanic ash. In this 发现蒙内铁路沿线，特别是靠近内楼壁这一段，有大量的天然火山灰的存在。Kenya is located at the junction of the African and Indian Ocean tectonic plates. This geologically active area has provided Kenya with copious amounts of volcanic ash. 大概从2014年到了内楼壁，沿着蒙内铁路的这条沿线。沿途勘察了所有的这些可以取到火山灰的样点，那么我们们取了很多的样，进行到我们中国建筑科学研究院进行一个系统的一个研究。The dust perform and the the tests have shown that it is giving good results, as good as when you use the fly ash. The research led to wide application of volcanic ash in the Mombasa Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway project. It not only solved a pressing problem, 
that has given Kenya and other regions in East Africa a very viable solution in future highway and bridge construction. As planned, the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway will pass through Tsavo National Park, the largest wildlife reserve in Kenya. The park covers more than 13,000 square kilometers and, at its widest point, is 240 kilometers. My name is Benson Okita. I'm head of monitoring at Save the Elephants. So, Charles, we're going to look for elephants in Savo generally. And in this ecosystem, we have about 13 to 14,000 elephants, at least from the last census that was done in 2014. Dr. Akito is tracking elephants in Tsavo East National Park. Soon after the Mombasa-Nairobi railway project began, concerns were raised by conservationists, fearing that the railway passing through the park would adversely affect local wildlife. Dr. Akita's worries are shared by the Chinese railway designers. <laughs> Zhang Jingqiao from Shandong Province has been engaged in railway survey and design for nearly 20 years and now works as the chief designer for the railway. During his career, he has witnessed six China Railway speed-up campaigns. Zhang Jingqiao recalled the Qinghai-Tibet Railway, where Chinese railway builders designed and built 33 wildlife passages along the line. Tracking indicates that over 10 years, the use of these passages by animals such as the Tibetan antelope has risen considerably. Zhang Jingqiao wants to use a similar design for the railway in Kenya. Zhang Jingqiao and his team decided to follow the existing transportation corridor when designing the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway. They designed 14 wildlife passages by erecting bridges or constructing culverts. Dr. Okita has dedicated years to wildlife conservation and knows that many environmental programs end up failing. In his opinion, greater study is needed to see Qinghai-Tibet Railway conservation plan can be applied in a Kenyan reality. In May 2016, the initial phase of track lane for the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway was completed. A three-kilometer stretch of railway cut through the town of Imali, causing inconvenience for the town's 25,000 residents. I want you to factor on uh, terms of uh, livestock. We have livestock. So the, that bridge starts, uh, use, uh, will be used by the vehicles. It will also be used by our livestock. The number of the population from the Maasai side is very high now, owing to the fact that people have shifted from other areas coming to the Maasai side due to the fact that they will be connected. So we thought it is easier and safe for the children to use uh, the footbridge than using one bridge with vehicles. Moses Emani Masha, liaison officer for the Section 4 project site office of the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway, is responsible for communication between the company and local residents. I went to China in the year 2008 uh, in uh, Wuhan city in Hubei province. I, I studied in China for six years. One year Chinese, 
plus five years for my major. Moses went to see Xiao Xian, executive project manager of the railway section four office. The Chinese builders are keen to avoid creating any inconvenience for local residents. Within a month, Xiao Xiang's team offer up a design plan for a pedestrian bridge, even though construction of this section had already concluded. So uh, from this map, eh, you can see on the left, it has a stair kind of look. So this one is where pedestrians will be walking. And then on the right, it's a bit smooth or straight. So this one is where things like a motorbike can be used or uh, bicycles, so that there they, they can be difference between people and uh, just, just to, to avoid any kind of accidents and such kind of things. It might be a final design, but we also want to hear your views about what you think about, about the, the, the pedestrian footbridge. Then I argue we will put consideration to facilitate the thing within that possible time earlier. In December of 2016, the railway company began construction of the pedestrian bridge in Emali. The newly designed bridge, which is opposite two schools, has cut three kilometers off students' daily commutes. This Eighteen months after work on the railway began, the design of wildlife corridors by Zhang Jingqiao's team has become reality. Lion. There's a lion footprint. Another lion footprint. That's smaller. And this is the big lion. So other wildlife can now use this culvert as an underpass from Savo West into Savo East. Dr. Okita, along with independent conservation groups, have discovered traces of wildlife on both sides of the corridors. Because I travel on it not every day, but many times yeah. a, a week. Yeah. I've seen elephant footprints come right up to it on both sides. Even now, if you come uh -huh. to the other side, so if you cross it, yeah, yeah. look the other side of the railway, you'll yeah. see fresh elephant yeah, footprints yeah. from last night. They're there now. And and they, where I turned around... And they crossed. And they I, use it. They use it. I don't know if they've actually... But they've come, they've Very come close. to have a look, yeah. they back off. But for yeah. sure, they will use it. They will use it. Right. It takes time for wildlife to get used to any new structures that are built in their ecosystem. Elephants are brave enough and it will not take them a lot of time, but the other species, which could be very shy. Dr. Okita continues his research along the Mombasa-Nairobi railway line. In August 2016, Esther and Ye Chun Gui managed to complete 1.4 million cubic meters of backfilling work. Esther has blossomed into an outstanding site engineer. Two years ago, where we are standing was a valley, but it has undergone a lot of changes and now it's ready to receive the railway. My life also has undergone a lot of changes.
before the bridge was blocked and closed for construction, Mariam invited her friends to visit some of the completed sections. A volcanic ash unearthed by Maria has been incorporated into the concrete used in constructing these bridges. If this project goes on from where it is right now, I can bring my friends, we can work together here so that they can feel the same thing I'm feeling over here. Along the Mombasa-Nairobi standard gauge railway, there are 79 bridges of varying height. Bridge builders not only surmount obstacles, but protect ecosystems and connect souls. The deep friendship between China and Kenya continues to flourish to this very day. Thanks in part to the Mombasa-Nairobi Railway, communication between the two nations has gotten even closer. Yeah, with the Chinese experience, they've built the Tibetan Railway, they've built long railway lines you know, passing through the parks. And when they build this, they take into consideration the needs for preserving the environment. Yeah, that experience is important in the African context. I think most of the challenges we are able to overcome, if you're determined to get something, you will get something. Nature has just a way of opening doors for people who are really determined in life. This can make me to tell my my children and I'll give back to, to kids one time in my lifetime. I'll be telling them about me working with the Standard Gauge Railway, what I used to do here, and they'll be happy that their mom once did something nice in Kenya. Uh, meaning of the bridge basically is uh, linking uh, this group of people to the other group of people. So as you understand this group of people, the Chinese, and I understand uh, my, my, my countrymen, then I, I connect. Uh, in terms of language, in terms of way of thinking. The number reached to 100 and the time.